Over 1,000 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders fought for Australia in World War I. They rode in the light horse. They climbed the slopes of Gallipoli. They fought and died in the trenches on the Western Front. But their first battle was fought well before they left the shores of Australia. Their first battle was simply to get a chance to serve their country. All persons not substantially of European origin or descent were exempt from combat by the Defence Act of 1903. Private Harold Cowan enlisted and served in the 6th Light Horse, but he was also known as Arthur Williams, which suggests success on the second attempt to enlist under another name. The process depended on the medical officer's judgment. In January 1916, Thomas Williams was examined and passed fit for active service, then discharged for no apparent reason. In July 1916, he re-enlisted under the name of Matthew Revenue and sailed to the 26th reinforcement of the 6th Light Horse. Private William Chatfield was found unfit for active service. He had an unsuitable physique. The single reason given was colour. He was examined again on the same day and again found unfit, this time on the ground that his physique was not suitable to stand the English or continental climate. On his third go-round, he was accepted and fought with the first Australian light horse. The boldness and skill of Aboriginal light horsemen was immediately remarked. These lean, hard men grew up in the bush. They were the very stuff of the Anzac legend. Harry Thorpe, born at Lake Tyre's Mission, Victoria, was described as conspicuous for his courage and leadership. His splendid example won him promotion and the military medal. On the 9th of August 1918, he was shot in the stomach during an advance in Leon Woods. His mate, William Rawlings, another Aboriginal soldier awarded the military medal, was killed on the same day. They were buried together at Harbonnières in France. They would not have thought their sacrifice more than that of any other digger. They all volunteered to put their lives on the line for their country. <laughs>